Hey everybody, this is Steve at the Whirly Bugger, and uh, thanks again for uh, joining us for our quarantine fly tying video series. This week we're branching out and uh, we're specializing in all of our uh, top secret bass patterns that we're going to bring to you uh, all week long here in the quarantine series. Today I'm going to show you how to tie the popping bugger. This is one of my favorite top water uh, poppers, divers gurglers for uh, for big bass out in the Columbia Desert. Uh, it absolutely will creates a huge wake and it will bring big bass from deep, deep water. It's pretty simple to put together um, based on the uh, JJ Bugger uh, from uh, my home, uh, home river, the Big Hole River. Uh, so it has that kind of unique blending of color, uh, orange, and uh, excuse me uh, yellow and brown just like the JJ so it's basically going to be tying a woolly bugger with legs but then we're going to get a, it's going to get a little bit more complicated putting this foam head uh, together on here and I'm going to show you how to do it so uh, stay tuned this is the JJ popping bugger all right so let's get started here with the uh, JJ popping bugger so the first thing that you're going to do is uh, hook size, it can vary. Today I'm using a uh, lightning strike bass bug hook size 4. Uh, uh, Gamagatsu B10S2 is a great hook. Uh, you can tie this inside, even for big mouth. Uh, if you want to tie it in, in larger sizes, you know, even down to like probably the smallest I'd go would be like a size 8. So just start your uh, your thread here, and I'm using GSP to build this fly. This is a big bass fly. We want it to stay together. We want everything tight. We want to be able to catch a lot of bass on this one fly, and if you put it together and uh, make it more durable, you'll just uh, you'll get more more uses out of it and uh, be able to catch more fish during the day. So. Just make sure that you lay down a real good thread base there. And then just work it all the way back to the band. Just stop it right back behind the, the point there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tie in our marabou tail. And like, like I said in the intro, it's this is a lot kind of like tying a woolly bugger. Um, so get your couple pieces of uh, marabou tail. It doesn't need to be super dense, super thick tail, but get them, get them where your points are are pretty pretty straight and together, and then do a measurement up there. Really want to try and avoid, you know, making your tail way back behind your behind your band. So lay it on top where you uh, where you think uh, looks good, and start laying that down. And this GSP you can really GSP stands for gel spun thread. So it's it's put together with gel. And spun of course which makes it super strong uh, you really can't break this thread you uh, I've actually broken bobbins before uh, tying bass and pike flies uh, pulling on the on on the thread so it's it's really near impossible to uh, to break super strong doesn't build up a, a lot of uh, a lot of bulk either on your on your fly so once you have your tail your marabou tails tied in there we're going to add a little bit of flash in the back and you can use whatever kind of flash you like um, you know i like this voodoo fiber it's kind of a barring comes in a bunch of different colors and uh, it just adds some it adds some kind of unique colors to uh, to the fly gives it a little bit bassier look i guess so just lay that right on top And tie that in, pull real tight so it doesn't come out. And then you can just 
trim off those ends. Get that all laid down. All right, so you're gonna need a, a couple of uh, extra tools to build this fly. And uh, we're gonna use an extra bobbin here. I got some uh, yellow six hot uni thread in here. It's pretty strong. And we're gonna use this as a ribbing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this around the shank a few times, cut that little tag in, and then I'm gonna pull it back out of the way. And uh, we're gonna use it in a few minutes down the road here. So once you've, uh, once you've tied that in, you're gonna take your chenille. And usually what I like to do is just kind of strip off a little end there where you got these threads. Just creates less bulk on your, on your fly. And then just lay those, those threads over the top and bind those down. Pull real tight. Somebody's in trouble. We get a lot of road noise here at the uh, at the fly shop when we're when we're building videos, so you just have to bear with us. We're in a uh, busy part of town. Okay, so after you've uh, tied in your chenille uh, that's going to uh, to make your body, you're going to tie in your rubber legs and. You can use a variety of different rubber legs. These are uh, round rubber, variegated, uh, silly legs from Wopsy. And work your thread to about a halfway point. Lay them over the top and then just make a couple of thread wraps there. And the weight of the bobbin will help keep those in place when you cut them. And then you can pull them down over the sides. And get them mounted in place where you want them. takes just a second to get them kind of situated there's not a lot of mass there to uh, to connect them to on that hook so once you get them connected in place where you want them then you can you can start binding them tighter and tighter to uh, to the shank and then that will splay them out so it looks like this so you got a little bit of thread mass in between and that uh, that gives your that that gives your legs a good good uh, you know a good tone and uh, and then they're spread out and splayed you know so you're going to get a lot of movement that that's kind of the main thing with bass fishing is having a fly that uh, you know creates some movement uh, you know they they have great great eyesight but they also do a lot of feeding from their lateral line and feeling movement. So the more movement that you can get out of your, out of your bass flies, usually the better. So once you got all these rubber legs tied in here, you got kind of a, a lot going on now. You got this tail in the back, you got your chenille, you got these rubber legs going everywhere. Here's a little trick that'll, that will help you to, uh, to tie in your body. So if you just pull all your rubber legs up, and pull them forward, kind of pinch them a little bit, and then just make a couple of really light thread wraps. So that will keep them out of the way for, uh, for your start on your uh, chenille body. So grab your chenille and then you can start winding it forward. And this is just a brown chenille. Work it forward, try and keep your proportions. And once you come to uh, to the base there of your rubber legs, you'll wanna undo them and uh, get them all splayed out. And 
and then this will help you if you pull those back out of the way and pull your chenille forward make sure it's nice and tight and man work it about three quarters of the way up the shank and then just kind of lightly bind it down just a little bit so you're going to want to do a measurement now and uh, for your head so I've, I've pre-cut my foam and I'm going to uh, I'm going to give you the little secret of how you do this but before I do that I'm going to lay them up here on the top just to kind of get a uh, get a measurement of where my body should end So I could probably do about one or two more wraps of chenille there. And that kind of helps. It, it helps with the back of the head too, and it gives it some, uh, gives it kind of a pressure point to push against uh, when you're fishing this fly. So once you get your chenille set where you want it, bind that down real well, and then trim it off and get it out of the way. And then just make a make a couple more thread wraps and even throwing a half itch in there is is good just keep it durable okay so basically what you've created here is you know just a rubber leg wooly bugger so the next thing you're gonna want is your hackle and I just got a grizzly feather here from a from a big grizzly cape Schlappen's also, uh, you know, if you got big grizzly schlappen too, um, that does a good job of, it looks really good. It's real, it's real webby and does a lot of breathing. So just lay that feather, strip off that quill so you, you have a little bit less mass to tie to, and then just bind that down. Where it's not going to pull out and trim that rest of that stem that quill off there and then uh, you can use your hackle plier or you know if your hackle is long enough you can just use your fingers usually what I like to do is make a couple of wraps first right in the very front there kind of build up that head and then just palmer your Grizzly hackle back. And as you're doing that, just try to keep it uniform. Try to keep the spacing. You know, so it looks so it looks nice, looks uniform. So remember that uh, that bobbin that I tied in with that yellow thread? That this is where it comes in handy. So we're gonna use this to uh, to tie down our our rib and bind our uh, our grizzly hackle to our uh, to our body so hold that and then just work your work that yellow thread forward and this just adds a little bit more durability I mean if you don't want to use thread you can you know, you can use wire too if you if you prefer that. But um, you know, this is a popper, so we're trying to keep it, you know, on the surface popping. Trying to keep it light. Trying to keep it durable, and just work it right through those hackles, so you're not. Binding any of them down, and then once you get that then you can just work it forward to the eye and tie it off make a couple of half hitches that's a pretty good trick for creating a, uh, a rib you, you, it's a little bit easier too you have a you know you have a bobbin that you're working with so you have a little bit more control you know of where you want to be able to uh, 
you know, layer layer thread in between. So, so basically, right here you have the JJ bugger. Um, if you were just to put some lead eyes on here now, and you'd have a killer uh, woolly bugger for just about anywhere that you go and and fish trout or brown trout. Brown trout especially love this fly, but even Yakima rainbows and cutthroats love to eat the JJ bugger. But since we're building the uh, JJ popping bugger for bass, I'm going to show you uh, how to build the head next. All right, so like I was saying earlier in the, at the start of the video, you're going to need a couple of extra uh, tools to, uh, to build these little discs, which are actually formed to uh, push water against. Uh, creates a huge wake as you're moving this fly. So what I have here is a grommet tool. Um, that I use for putting grommets in different things works great. It's sharp, and I can try. I can use a sharpener on it to uh, to punch out my uh, to punch out my little discs. And you can build this. You can build this fly in a variety of different colors. Uh, chartreuse is great. White, white and red. Uh, so you know, really, what, whatever you want to do. I just happen to like this color especially. Um, so. I've, I've formed all of these and I've punched out uh, all my discs, okay? So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take each one of these discs and you're gonna wanna take your bodkin and you're gonna wanna puncture each one of these discs all the way through creating a hole here and then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your your bob uh your bot your bobbin threader or a rubber leg puller uh, both both would work and then you're going to want to place this stacking it on your on your bobbin threader all the way uh until you've punctured and applied all all of your uh, foam discs to your bobbin threader. Okay, so once you have your foam discs all loaded on your bobbin threader, you're gonna wanna take your GSP here and pull six or eight inches of it out and bind it down, kind of like you're forming a dubbing loop. And cut that so you just have a exposed piece of thread hanging there. And then you can just work your bobbin forward and just to get this out of the way, You can make a couple half inches and cut that off because you don't you don't need it right now uh, you know for the work that you're going to be doing here so the first thing that you're going to want to do is just start applying your discs to this thread one at a time mm. So like this, and just pull one disc off. It's threaded on to the string. Oh, not the string, the thread, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I just started fly tying. Um, so once you have that, then that just lays right up on the top and make a couple of tight thread wraps and again this is GSP so you can you can pull hard on it make a few thread wraps and half hitch it and just continue load another disc onto your thread again get the disc in place where you want it and wrap it 
tightly and make a half hitch and you'll do that we're going to put in five different discs so you'll do that for every single disc so uh, I've loaded all of my discs onto uh, the top of the shank and they're now all in place uh, the last of my uh, piece of GSP thread is here I can just wind that around the uh, the eye of the hook and uh, I can uh, make a couple of half hitches and secure it and tie that off so it should look like this so now your your discs are all are all mounted uh, in place and you have your popper head and now we're going to uh, start on the last remaining steps so we're going to reattach our our uh, GSP thread behind the eye here get this little tag out of here and then what we're going to want to do so we're going to want to reinforce these just open up every single little disc there and run your run your thread through there I don't know six or eight times pull down tight that will secure them even more help keep them in place strengthen the fly And then just work it back towards the front. Pull down tight. Try to move that hackle out of the way. You don't want to catch any of that hackle in, uh, in any of the foam heads there. So once you feel like, hey, my head, it's, it's secured, it's nice and tight on top there, then uh, you can just make a couple of half hitches with your thread and you will be done with your bobbin. Cut that off, it's out of place. So the last remaining step is we're gonna glue our head together. And this is important, you gotta use the right super glue to do this, you can't, unfortunately you can't use uh, UV glue to bind them together. Um, so, I like this uh, Wopsies Z-Mint. It's made for foam. So if you're using a uh, a super glue of any type, you got to make sure that uh, it works well with foam. I also like this has a brush applicator, so you can get in there and and brush it. So got to be careful not to use too much. Push those together. Make sure that they're that they're bound nice and straight and together. You can blow on that a little bit, as we learn. Uh, you'll learn from uh, our video on Friday, Mr. Singh tie, tying the uh, Dahlberg diver. That uh, super glue actually excels and dries quicker if you if you uh, expose it to uh, to air and to uh, just breathe on a little bit so if you just blow on it it kind of gets all the excess out of there and then put your back piece together and then you can just do those middle pieces And we got one left to do there. And 
you can kind of push those to push those foam discs together and make sure that they're that they're binding really good and that you're going to get a nice solid popper head And then the last thing that you can, last few things here we can do is just take your rubber legs and split those. I don't know that they can be, they could probably be too long. If you feel like they're a little long, you can take and, and uh, trim them a little bit. And then the last thing that I really like to do is take some solar res, bone dry, and also brush applicator, which is nice. It's just lay it on this very bottom base foundation here. Put a uh, good, put a good layer of UV glue on the bottom, and then just fry it with your UV light and that will just help create more durability on your fly and like I said you'll get lots and lots of uses out of this <clears throat> this fly is really going to take a beating right in the very front so you want to make sure that you really put that together well but that is the JJ popping bugger for bass uh, not really difficult to put together, but uh, lots of fun and uh, trying to figure it out and uh, gave you the secret steps. So I hope you can get out there, give it a try, check out the website for more information or for purchasing options. I hope everybody's uh, staying sane during uh, our quarantine time. We'll see you on the river.